welcome. In this on-demand video, OJM group partner Andrew Taylor discusses the pros and cons of including bonds versus cash in today's investment portfolios. If you have more questions or want to learn how to incorporate this strategy into your financial planning, click the link below to schedule a complimentary one-on-one -on -one consultation with one of our experienced team members. Hello, my name is Andrew Taylor. Thank you for tuning in today. Uh, the title of my uh, discussion is Bonds versus Cash, the pros and cons. Uh, so why is this topic at relevant today? And it's a question that we're getting very, very frequently from investors. Why would I invest in bonds uh, when the yields on cash are very, very similar and I don't have to worry about uh, a loss of principal? So the question's very fair, and we felt like it may be uh, worth spending a few moments just to share some of our thoughts. Uh, and in order to understand um, the answer to that question, I think it, it makes sense to um, understand what's happened in the bond market and address some of the losses that investors have experienced. Um, in fact, these are the worst losses in the history of the bond market. Uh, if we go if we go back from you know January one of 2022 through the end of the third quarter of 23, the AG, which is a widely accepted benchmark for the bond market, was down uh, on nearly 14 uh, percent. And even more drastic, um, the ETF TLT, which is a benchmark for the 20 year Treasury, uh, was down more than 37 percent over that same period of time. And if we extend um, the uh, the period of evaluation further to three years, going from the end of October 2020 to the end of October 23, uh, the numbers were even worse with the ag down nearly 16% and TLT uh, and borderline astronomical 43% loss. Um, and again, investors are frustrated because these are the vehicles designed to limit downside, to provide protection for portfolios when you know these instruments have, have done anything but provide that doubt, that protection, which is very, very frustrating. So um, why did this happen? I think before we answer the, the question bonds versus cash and assess the pros of each, it's important to understand bond pricing and exactly how bond and pricing works. So there are two factors that impact bond pricing, credit quality and duration. Now, credit quality wasn't necessarily an, a factor in the losses that were experienced over the last um, you know, 21 months in the bond market. Credit quality just simply reflects the likelihood that a bond will default. Um, we didn't necessarily have credit issues in 2022 and 23, but what the bond market did experience uh, was an increase in interest rates. And duration is the term uh, that reflects a bond sensitivity to movement in interest rates. And this factor was responsible for essentially all of the losses that uh, investors experienced in the bond market. So a simple way to think about duration is how long does it take for you to receive your money? So it's not quite the same as average maturity. Uh, the factors that influence um, you know, bond pricing and specifically duration are both the frequency and the size of those interest payments. And if you, if you think about a seven-year bond, right, you invest your money, you're receiving the principal back in seven years. However, if you're getting semi-annual interest payments with a healthy uh, coupon that's being paid, you're getting your money back before seven years. So in that scenario, maybe duration 6.2, 6.3. But the, you get the idea. Typically, there's a strong correlation between duration and average maturity. And the longer the duration on the bond, uh, the worse results for investors over the recent three-year period. And again, the, the most recent 21 months um, with the third quarter of 23. And so to fully understand bond pricing and how it works, I think that the best way uh, to explain is to um, get into a hypothetical example. So uh, let's look at a case study and, and these yields that I'm using are not very far from you know, what actually transpired, but we did some rounding for simplicity's sake. Um, so we take client A, uh, invests $100,000 into a five-year bond, which is yielding 2% interest in, in 2022. And then one year later, client B invests 100000 in a four-year bond, paying a 5% rate of interest. Now, at this point, when client B is making that purchase, we effectively have two four-year bonds. Um, so client A has a bond that will return $100,000 in, in four years. As does client B, 
but the difference is in the cash flow and the income that those two investors are going to experience. So client A's bond will pay $8,000 in interest over the four-year life of that bond, whereas client B will receive $20,000 in interest over that same four-year period. So naturally, there's a $12,000 difference uh, in the cash flow between um, the, the cash flow that will be received from those two investors. So consequently, consequently client A's bond will need to reprice. Uh, and the pricing essentially would be, and it's not dollar for dollar, you know, so it won't necessarily be a $12,000 de decrease in the price of the bond because there's time value of money and some other more complex factors. However, you, you get the idea and the basic understanding that client A's bond has to reprice to reflect current market conditions because anyone purchasing a $100,000 bond is certainly going to prefer uh, $20,000 in interest over $8,000 in interest. So let's get to the, to answering the question, bonds versus cash. Um, what are the pros and cons of each? So we'll start with money market funds, and we use money market for the purpose of this discussion as a, a proxy for cash because um, you know the, it provides the, the greatest similarity. Um, so the advantage of money market funds, variable interest rates, uh, and a short average maturity means that when the Fed is increasing rates, uh, there will be rapid increases in the yields of these money market funds. So that certainly was a positive for investors over the course of the last couple of years. And if the environment were to continue, um, you know, which in our opinion is fairly unlikely, but if in that, in that environment were to continue, money market funds would likely outperform. Um, also, the price of money market funds will not fluctuate, assuming there's proper risk management in place. Um, you know, if we go back to 2008, which is you know, the financial crisis, and it was the worst time uh, for fixed income vehicles. Most money market funds maintain that $1 per share price during a period of distress for the financial system. Now, now, there were a select few that broke the buck, but those, you know, that fell under a dollar. Um, but those occurrences were extremely rare. And in fact, most companies that saw that happen with their money funds, they injected capital so their clients didn't lose faith. Uh, in the money, in the proprietary money market funds. Now, there's certainly no guarantee that that it, those conditions will repeat themselves, and, and those uh, sponsors of those money funds will make the same decision. But I, I say all this just to say it's very, very rare uh, that we'll see a money market fund fall, fall below one dollar per share price. So we have a high degree of confidence that that most funds will continue, uh, and there's negligible risk in these money funds. Uh, the final advantage: immediate liquidity. Uh, if you sell a money market fund. You can get your cash typically within two to three business days. It's not like investing in a CD, um, you know, where you may have to wait six months, nine months, twelve months to get your cash. So we use money market funds as a proxy for cash for the purpose of this discussion. Uh, where the disadvantages, the yields decline quickly when rates are falling. So if money market funds can't simply sit in quote unquote cash. They actually have to own securities, and when those securities are maturing every few days. They're having to buy at those prevailing rates. So if we have an environment where short-term interest rates are falling, those yields are going to fall and fall rapidly uh, with those money funds. And the way that the bond market is trading, it's suggesting to us that rates are going to fall at some point in 2024. Um, the other disadvantage, typically you'll see money market funds pay a lower rate of interest relative to bond. Now, if we turn the page and look at the pros and cons of bonds, most of these are inverse, right? So the advantage of bonds is the yields are typically higher than cash equivalents, money markets. Uh, now that spread today is very narrow relative to where it's been historically. So you're not seeing a, a tremendous uh, reward investing in bonds versus cash and cash equivalents. And in some cases, if you go longer on the yield, longer out on the yield curve or buy longer maturity bonds, you will actually receive a lower yield than what you've received from cash and cash equivalents today. But that doesn't mean that they should not invest in bonds. We'll touch on that in a, in a minute. Um, individual bonds, they do allow you to lock in yields. So if we have an environment where rates are falling, those money market rates are going to fall very quickly. So there would be certainly an advantage to locking in your yields because the yields on those bonds, specifically if you're buying a an individual bond, those yields are fixed and they're not going to change based off current market conditions. Even if you buy a bond fund, the average maturity may be seven years, it's going to take 
quite some time for those yields to drop significantly in a falling rate environment. So your return stream would likely be better in that situation where rates are falling, owning bonds versus money market funds, even if the yields are equal or maybe not as high in a, a longer term bond fund. Now, what are the disadvantages? We've seen many of these, um, you know, firsthand over the course of the last couple of years. Bond prices will decline when rates are rising. Um, also, there's a risk of owning a vehicle, paying a below rate, below market rate of interest for multiple years. And again, that's what that hypothetical case study was attempting to demonstrate. If rates are two, suddenly they jump up to five, and you own a five-year bond. Well, now you're you're getting big below market rates during that four-year period, as the example indicated. Uh, there's also a higher risk of default in bonds versus money markets. Um, now, there's all different types of bond funds and you know, bonds that you can invest in directly in, in terms of you know who, where, who is lending the money. Uh, you can look at credit quality to distinguish, but um, one of the bigger reasons you've got a higher risk in owning bonds is just because of the, the longer period of time of those underlying vehicles. So your bonds may be maturing in five, seven years. Conditions can change quite drastically over a long period of time. Money markets, their average maturity, you know, maybe three months, six months, depending upon the fund. Typically, if conditions are deteriorating, you can see that um, and, and you have some uh, advance notice before some kind of credit event or default does occur. So slightly higher risk um, you know, in bonds or a lot of the money markets due to uh, the associated credit risk. So in conclusion, if we summarize everything touched on today, uh, bonds and money markets both play a critical role in an investor's diversified portfolio. So I think it's important to state you, you don't necessarily want to go all in, uh, in or all out in either strategy. And they're suitable for every investor. Uh, money market funds do tend to outperform in a rising interest rate environment, whereas bonds have typically outperformed when interest rates are either falling or they're unchanged. Uh, and that phrase, cash is king, that we often hear when there's stress in the financial markets, that statement is somewhat misleading simply because bonds have outperformed cash and cash equivalents um, by more than 2% over most um, extended market cycles. Now, certainly not over every period in history, and the short-term results would favor cash and cash equivalents. However, um, if we, when you evaluate, again, almost any extended period, historically bonds have outperformed cash and done so on a consistent basis. Um, and the last point to make is that we would strongly encourage you to, to resist the urge to sell an underperforming asset. What should make, what should influence your investment decisions, and not just with bonds versus cash, but with equities or, or any vehicle, is you know what do forward-looking returns look like? That should be the ultimate factor in terms of where you allocate your dollars, where you allocate your capital, uh, and the environment would certainly favor um, you know fixed income if rates do decline. And again, this is the environment that the bond market is telling us is very, very likely to occur. So uh, it's probably not the optimal time to abandon bonds um, for cash and cash equivalents. Um, but everyone's situation is unique. So if you do have any questions about the content that was covered um, in the webinar today, please feel free to reach out to us. Be happy to answer those questions in greater detail. Thank you very much for tuning in. OJM is a multidisciplinary wealth management firm. For nearly two decades, our firm has helped physicians across the U.S. reduce taxes, protect assets, and achieve their financial goals. OJM Group offers viewers a complimentary consultation where we can answer your questions to see if our firm might be a good fit for your situation. Simply click the button below to schedule your free consultation. We hope to speak with you soon. Thanks for watching.